Jay Inslee for um, uh, District 1, uh, Federal Congressman. And we're going to just go ahead around the table and introduce ourselves and start with, starting with Tom and question by question. I'm Tom Anderson. Uh, the first question I have for you is, what is the function of the federal government? The function of the federal government, I think, is to do exactly what the Constitution says, which is primarily to create an environment for Americans to thrive. Great. <laughs> that was a philosophical answer. I can talk more if you want, but I think that's the, that's the point. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I'm Doris Carinder from Bremerton. And um, so, um, why are you running for this position? Why do you want to be in Congress? And what would be your primary goals if you get elected? Are you related to Kelly? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Okay, so why am I running? And goals? Mm -hmm. when I'm if elected? you get elected, yes. Well, I'm surely planning on being elected. But there was a third part to the question, wasn't there? No. Yeah. Well, I'm running, uh, first of all, I started off doing, how long do I have for answers? Am I you are to welcome to, we've got about an hour, okay. so we'll get through what we get through. If we've got extra time, we can chat after. It's just up to you. How long you want to stay, we're, okay. we're a pretty easy group. I, I started... Um, well, I'm running because I started off doing tea parties, and my wife and I got involved in that about, actually not too long after Kelly did her porculus uh, protest, and we realized that our government was out of control with that porculus bill. It was a trillion dollars, 800 billion, whatever, of stimulus that we can't afford. We looked at the details of that, and it wasn't going to do anything for the country, and as it turns out, it hasn't. Now we're on the hook for several trillion dollars to pay that back. I've seen estimates as high as $3.2 trillion to pay that back. So we got out there and, and we realized uh, that our kids were on the hook for a million dollars of unfunded mandates and direct debt of the United States. It's not sustainable. That's why we started getting involved in, in tea parties, waving our signs on the corner like so many folks. And we started thinking about how we can really have a real impact. You know, waving signs on the corner is fun and it gets some attention, but it wasn't having the real change that we wanted. And so we talked about what we could do, and my wife uh, said, you're going to run for office basically at the bottom, at the end of the day. Uh, and I have a background <coughs> that makes me uniquely suited to defeat Jay Inslee. Uh, I am the only guy running that has actually cut government spending at the federal level, and uh, I've also helped create thousands of private sector jobs, and I think that's exactly what we need in Congress right now, not another politician, uh, not somebody that doesn't know how to actually operate in Washington, D.C. Is that me? Mm -hmm. It is me. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Let me turn that off. That's not intrusive, though. It's better than a... <laughs> the, so that's why I'm running. We can't afford our government, and, and I think we can do better. The second piece of that is what is my goal uh, for when I go to Washington. What I want to do is return spending discipline to the country. I want to have a government that we can afford that is constitutionally limited. The platform of my campaign is on my volunteers' t-shirts. It's less government, more jobs. And so I am running on a platform uh, primarily of, of fiscal conservatism, uh, and going back to Washington and helping create an environment uh, that is going to help create those jobs and a business climate where businesses can invest and thrive. Oh, you didn't get one? I didn't he can one. use this one. I didn't get we one. We can share. <laughs> I know you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll surprise you. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, what are the most critical issues facing the country today, and how will you contribute to the solutions? And my name is James Carringer. Okay. It's good to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. you. The, the, critical, the most critical issue facing the country today is the financial situation that we're in. Just this morning in the, uh, it was probably on Drudge or, or one of the, uh, Admiral Mullins, the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, was talking about the biggest danger facing the United States. It's not Iraq, it's not uh, Al-Qaeda, it's not the nuclear-armed Korea, it's the debt. It is the debt that our country has. We have, uh, this year we're paying about $570 billion for debt, which is about the same that we pay for our Department of Defense. We cannot sustain that. Uh, we have a situation right now where we have historically low interest rates, which is keeping our debt payments down. What's going to happen when that jumps up to 6%, 8%? Uh, 
we're going to be totally swamped by that, and that's going to dramatically and drastically affect <coughs> the way that we live and the freedom and flexibility that we have to do the things that we need to do as a country. We have to get control of spending, number one, and the second thing we have to do is, is grow the economy so that we can get out from under this debt. That's the biggest issue. My name is Janet Plummer, and how do you propose to do that, that you just the problem that you just mentioned, how do you propose to solve it? With the debt? Well, there, there are two or three things that I'll do right away uh, when I get to Congress. The first thing is I will pass spending and budgeting reform so that we know what the Congress is voting on. Uh, we'll limit bills to a, a specific uh, number of pages, 150 pages is my goal, with a number of related issues inside. We can't have these big omnibus bills that we have where we have 2,700 pages of health care that nobody's read. Uh, and they throw in 400-page amendments at the last minute that nobody has a chance to read before they vote. So that's got to happen. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other things, but basically it's truth in spending. The other thing we need to do is truth mm -hmm. in budgeting, uh, which is the separate piece of that, where when we go through the budgeting process for the individual agencies and pieces of the federal government, we absolutely have to make sure that they are starting with the zero-dollar baseline. They are justifying every single program every year so that we can evaluate those and so we don't have the automatic creep of government that we're getting now. So that's the first thing on the spending side. Second thing we need to do is we need to totally reevaluate the regulations and the red tape that our government's imposing on us and imposing on our businesses. We have a business climate right now where the businesses are afraid to invest. Uh, many of the businesses are sitting on pretty huge pots of money that they're just not investing because they don't know where the taxes are going to go, they don't know where the inheritance tax is going to go. Uh, they don't know where the capital gains tax is going to uh, go. We have to really take a look at that. We have a 70,000 page tax code right now. So we've got to simplify that, make it easier for the businesses uh, to thrive. And then there's some other things we can do along the uh, really solving the business climate. And so if we have a better business climate and we have stability in our taxing and, and regulations, that's going to increase the economy and grow it. And then the third thing we have to do, of course, is to get back to a more limited government. Uh, right now we have a government that's out of control, totally out of control. It grew 12% last year, 8% this year in the discretionary spend, and that's got to be cut back down. We've got to get back to core constitutional principles and the proper role of government across the board. Thank you. I have a follow-up to follow that. <laughs> um, if we don't manage to, um, to turn the majority, if we don't capture the House quite, uh, what are your thoughts about how, in, I like your solutions, but what would you do if you're not in majority uh, in order to try to bring more light to these and, and more focus? Well, the first thing is I think we are going to take the House. Okay. Everything that I see indicates that we are going to be able to get the 40 seats minimum, and I think that we're going to get more than that. So my plans are predicated on getting a majority in the House. If we don't get a majority in the House, um, we're going to have a much more uh, focused and constitutional Congress than we have today. And there will be a sea change there in the kind of decisions they make, so I think we'll see much different spending. And the only thing that I can do there, I would be a congressman, one of 435 votes of one half of one third of the government. And so the only thing I can do is argue and advocate for our positions. One of the things that I'm very good at that I've done my entire career is putting together coalitions and getting people to see things my way. And that's what we would have to do in Washington. Or our way, I should say. It's not just my way or the highway, but it's it's the things I think that we we jointly believe. Well, along that, would you would you write legislation that would uh, put the pay raises for Congress and the Senate back to the people of the states that represent the representative of it? I think that's appropriate. Yeah, instead of letting them write their own ticket. Right. Well, okay. What they've got now is a process that they get automatic pay raises mm -hmm. as long as they don't vote against those pay raises. And so they just stay away from it and they get automatic pay raises every year. I don't think that's a good system. I think they should yeah, do that right. in the light of day. And if Congress is doing their job and uh, they deserve a pay raise, they should be uh, willing to vote for that in the light of the public. Okay. What would you like to see done to improve the climate for businesses in the country today? Well, I've talked a lot about that. We need to dramatically reduce the red tape and, and so forth that we have, but the biggest thing that we can do is to remove the uncertainty uh, that businesses are facing right now. Business people simply don't know when the shoe is going to drop from the government on the next thing. And right now the government is looking at businesses, uh, small businesses, 
anybody <coughs> over two hundred thousand dollars is their personal piggy bank. I'm a, a small business expert. I work with small businesses all over the country. I talk to 20 or 30 small businesses a week, and these guys are getting killed right now. And it's because of the climate, the business climate, the uncertainty, uh, because of the uncertainty uh, that we face uh, just as consumers. I, was doing, I just came from lunch with a, a group of businessmen over in Bainbridge, heard a story of a fellow who had a thriving business until about a year and a half ago. Now that's 150 jobs gone off of Bainbridge Island because of the changes that this business climate has done to his business, and more particularly, the government regulation and red tape that makes it almost impossible for him to continue his business in a profitable way. No.